India receives a yearly remittance of around $111 billion, which is the highest in the world. In our last video, we saw the incredible impact Indians currently have in North America. But did you know that Indians have a deep and rich history in the Middle East that started with trade many years ago? However, their success and benefits there are quite limited, and their rights and freedoms are subdued. So let's now explore the state of Indians in the Middle East, the good, the bad and the ugly. Let's go! How Indians Wound Up in the Middle East The earliest records of trade in human civilization were between the Dilmun Empire on the west coast of the Persian Gulf, which is modern-day Bahrain, and the Indus Empire, modern-day India. This has been supported by the findings of Harappan and Indus pottery in modern-day Qatar and Oman. Basically, India and the Middle East have a very long history that stretches over millennia, especially as far as commerce is concerned. Trades of spices, cotton, silks, coffee and even slaves were one major activity that tied the Middle East with India. Fast forward to the Middle Ages and Arab traders became frequent visitors to India's coast. They weren't just exchanging goods but also ideas and cultures. This exchange of ideas left its mark, especially in the southern state of Kerala in India, where even today you can see the influence of Arab traditions in food, language and buildings. Things changed further when Muslim rulers came to India in the 13th century. This opened the door for stronger connections with people from the Middle East, like Arabs, Persians and Turks. Many of them even chose to make India their new home, creating a lasting impact on the country's cultural fabric. Fast forward to the British Raj or colonial rule of India in mid-19th century, and we saw a great number of Indians migrate to the Middle East. Then, as the oil boom of the 1970s reared its head, this migration increased further. The situation today. Today, there are millions of Indian expats living in the Middle East, especially in the oil-booming Gulf states that make up the Gulf Cooperation Council, or GCC. As of 2023, 10 million Indians live in the six Gulf states, which include Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, and Oman. This seems rather insignificant as it's just only nearly a quarter of the population of New Delhi alone, but they make up the highest number of non-nationals employed in the GCC. Obviously, the high number of Indian migrants to these regions is attributed to the discovery of oil in the Gulf nations and the need for labour. But among these six GCC states, Saudi Arabia and the UAE have more Indian foreigners. And once again, all of this is tied to India's long history between the two countries. Saudi Arabia and UAE were heavily influenced by the British, just like India, which made the migration of Indians to these countries possible. As a result, the majority of the remittances that India enjoys comes from the Middle East. For example, it was reported in 2017 that $13.8 billion went back home to India from the wages of Indians working in the UAE alone. This is $2 billion more than the US, who sits at number two. The other countries that came in third, fourth and fifth were Saudi Arabia, Kuwait and Qatar respectively. These remittances have helped many impoverished families back home, especially in Maharashtra and Kerala, improving their lives significantly. However, since the rapid influx of Indian migrants due to the oil boom of the 70s, the majority of Indian expatriates worked as unskilled labourers in blue-collar industries. Nevertheless, today, many Indian immigrants are also in other sectors in the Middle East, such as financing, technology and healthcare, working as skilled individuals. But this doesn't take away the challenges that the majority of Indians, especially the non-resident Indians, who are unskilled workers, face in the Middle East. Some challenges faced. Most foreign workers are employed through the kafala system, which binds Indians to their employees, who can do whatever they like to them, such as determine how long they can stay in the country. Indians are also subject to fines, imprisonment and deportation for any slight wrongdoing, such as leaving their job without permission. Worse, they are prevented from forming unions and protesting against these unfair treatments. It's basically lawful mistreatment and dehumanisation of labour. Things have been so bad that it's caught the attention of the Indian government to try to step in. Indian Prime Minister Modi has had several dialogues with leaders of Gulf states on the need to improve working conditions for the immigrants from India. Thankfully, the mistreatment of Indians in the Middle East is not the only narrative to rely on, because Indians have also impacted these regions in a positive light. More than just jobs. The leaders of India recognise the strength its population holds, and the relationship of the Middle East and the country over the years has made their relationships extend beyond jobs alone. 
This is why India's swift and large-scale aid to Turkey and Syria, following the natural disaster in 2023, signals a shift. It was part of a broader desire for India to be seen as a primary responder to crises. However, this response is strategic, not just humanitarian alone. It's one element of a different effort to enhance India's profile across the Middle East, a trend exemplified by inviting the Egyptian president as the chief guest for its Republic Day celebrations and by actively participating in the West Asia Quad, alongside Israel, the UAE and the US. Speaking of the US, as they shift their focus towards China and Eurasia, India seeks to proactively secure its interests in the Middle East. The region is essential for India, serving as a crucial source of investment, energy and remittances, while also sharing security concerns about extremism and terrorism. India aims to be prepared for any potential fallout, resulting from diminished US presence in the region. While historical links and cultural connections still resonate, the core of the present-day relationship is firmly grounded in economics, trade and investment. As already highlighted, millions of Indians live and work in the Gulf, with their remittances forming a significant economic lifeline for India. Trade and investment with key Middle Eastern countries like Egypt, Saudi Arabia and the UAE have also flourished. Additionally, energy security remains a major priority for India, which depends heavily on imports. The Middle East, particularly the UAE, addresses some of these concerns by contributing to India's strategic oil reserves. Furthermore, collaboration on renewable energy sources between India and the Middle East continues to grow. In a similar vein to its successful Look East policy, which fostered strong ties with East and Southeast Asia, India now seems to be pursuing a Look West strategy. This policy prioritizes deeper economic and strategic partnerships with countries in the Middle East, reflecting India's ambition for a secure and prosperous future on both regional and global scales. Let's now look at some of the major structures and influences that the relationship between the Middle East and Indians has necessitated. Architecture Knowing how far back India and the Middle East go, the mutual inspiration both cultures have on each other's architecture is evident throughout history. India's most well-known piece of architecture, the Taj Mahal, features several dome structures, quite similar to the designs of mosques. Aside from the dome structure, the calligraphy and the detailed engravings in it also reflect the historical and cultural connection between India and its Arab neighbours. The similarities are so profound that you can look at a building in India and feel like you're somewhere in Saudi Arabia. Sports Given the population of Indians in the Middle East, they have inspired the love for cricket in the Middle East. In UAE, for example, there is the Sharjah Cricket Association Stadium, which hosts cricket games between India and other countries in South Asia. The influence of Indians in the Middle East also extends to other parts such as trade, migration and cultural exchange. These influences manifest in various aspects of society, economy and culture in the Middle East. Cultural Exchange India's enriched culture, including its cuisine, music, dance and cinema, has a profound influence on the Middle East. Indian restaurants are common in many Middle Eastern cities, but more significantly, the breaking of fast or iftar by Middle Easterns has been done with Indian dishes, such as the Hyderabadi biryani and halim. Indian cooks from Hyderabad and Kerala are also highly sought after for employment in hotels and restaurants in the Gulf region. Furthermore, Bollywood films and songs are popular among Middle Easterns. In fact, many believe that they are infatuated with Indian entertainment. Even as far back as the 1960s, the popular movie Dorsti was aired in cinemas in the UAE. This cultural exchange fosters mutual appreciation and shared experiences between the people of the two regions. Religious and historical ties There are historical ties of religious scholarship and pilgrimage between the Indian subcontinent and the Middle East, particularly in the context of Islam. The exchange of religious scholars and the presence of Indian Muslims making the Hajj pilgrimage to Mecca have contributed to these ties. On the other hand, Hinduism has been in the Middle East since the 16th century because of the migration of Indians to its parts. It's reported that 15.1% of the Qatari population is made up of Hindus. But while you would find Hindu temples and practices in places like the UAE, Oman, Yemen and Bahrain, countries like Saudi Arabia prohibit Hindu engagement. This is because of the strong Sunni practice by Saudis who perceive Hinduism as idol worshipping. Educational and social influence There is a notable presence of Indian educational institutions and professionals in the Middle East, 
contributing to the region's educational services. Indian teachers, professors and education professionals are prominent in schools and universities across the Middle East. Additionally, Indian social organizations and community groups play vital roles in supporting the Indian diaspora and facilitating cultural integration. In summary, Indians have a significant and diverse influence on the Middle East across economic, cultural and social spheres. This influence is a testament to the deep historical connections and ongoing interactions between the two regions. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe below to stay tuned for more fascinating insights such as this.